Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Table Mom. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing now with the new Ting Lu EX deck. Not so sure how um, powerful or good this will deck be, but you never know, right? Um, obviously the Cursed Land ability, where as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's Pokemon in play that have any damage counters on them have no abilities except for Pokemon EX, right? So that is important to note. But stopping Archeob, stopping Curlia, you know, amongst others, it's gonna be really, really cool. And then we have the land scoop attack to 150 damage, and you put the damage counters on one of your opponent's benched Pokemon, allowing you to further damage or further shut down any other abilities. Now, in order to power up, we are going to be using Poridon EX with the Dino Prime ability. Once you're in your turn, you may attach up to two basic fighting energy guards for this Ball to your basic fighting Pokemon any way you like, but if you use this ability, your turn ends. So we're going to be using it on turn one, probably not further than that, though maybe sometimes, not so sure, um, but we have the option, right? And then we also have the Wild Impact attack. You never know when it might be useful. During your next turn, this Pokemon cannot attack, just like um, Raiden, right? With a similar trend of the ability, if you will, but obviously for fighting types. And then how are we going to get those damage counters? We're going to be using Halucha's Flying Entry ability, allowing us to choose two Pokemon, put one damage counter on each, and therefore shutting down their abilities. We also have Radiant Alakazam in case we want to move damage around to shut down further abilities and um, play towards some nice chaos with damage manipulation. We have Spiritum locking down abilities even further with um, Fettered in Misfortune. That's a very weird name for an ability, but shutting down basic Pokemon being play, Genesect and Drapion, but more importantly, Luminion. And then the Fatal Attack, not super great, but it is what it is. And then we have the Skogability EX, this really nice, cute looking card with the ability Skog and Seize. Once you're in your turn, you may discard your hand and draw six cards. You can't use more than one Skog and Seize ability during your turn. Um, not the best, not the worst. We also have the Motivate Attack, which does 20 damage, and you attach up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So not the worst starter either by any means. Uh, playing two copies means we will be able to potentially power it up quickly. Now we have Battle VIP Pass, we have um, Ultra Ball. Realize now that this is probably not the best uh, place to have the, <laughs> the sponsor. I'll just keep moving that around over and over. But right down here is the list. I could do something a little bit more um, elaborate, but I think for now this will uh, suffice. We have Valve and Pass, we have Ultra Ball. We also have the Godsey Pickaxe, which is pretty decent. You reveal the top card of your deck, and that card is a fighting energy. You may attach it to one of your best Pokemon. If it is not, you just put it into your hand. So it's at the very moment, minimum draw one. And then sometimes you get lucky and you get one of your 14 energies. Now, to further annoy opponents, we have Temple of Sinnoh to shut down special energies. We have Grant to do extra damage. Um, with our fighting type Pokemon and discard energies as well, which we do need for the turn one Crydon. We have Iono to um, target down and apply pressure um, on your opponent's hands. And the Nine Research says we have Bravery Charm to increase our HP of Tinglu up to a whopping 290 damage, um, 290 HP, sorry, which is pretty cool. And then we have Penny for some soft healing, EXP sure for some soft energy attachments, and 14 basic energies because we really really want to discard those as soon as we can so let's jump into some games in the ladder and see how we can do if you want to support the channel you can use code tailmon to get five percent off at potan store for your online codes ten percent off for your sealed product at flipside gaming and ten percent off on your aluminum accessories at tc evolutions or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves you can fill up your cart and close the tab then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out that way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market, and Dragon Shield. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyper Beam Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Lotai. Alrighty, so we get to go first. And thank you to those who provided feedback on the positioning of uh, my camera. Uh, definitely very very important to to have that 
Why is it corner? Oh, I uh, just aligned it perfectly. Oh, okay. <sighs> All right. So solid ish start. Um, we are going first, so I can just get the Gryden and then hopefully uh, Skoga Billy into some energies and another Ultral perhaps. Top thinking and energy would also be pretty good. Um, powering up the Tinglu is definitely one of the big challenges for this deck and why this deck probably will not be super, super dominant, but we shall see. All right. Okay, so very nice, very nice mulligan. And we're up against a lightning deck, so <laughs> very unfortunate for my opponent, I guess. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna Skogabilly on turn one. We priced the other Gryden, not a big deal. Um, how many energies did we prize? I mean, if we get two energies onto Tinglu on turn one, I'll be very happy. So now I just want to draw literally one and here we go Dog and seeds all right so we do find one which i'm okay with got some pickaxe oh, okay let's go this attaches to anywhere you want all right so very nice start honestly very very nice start now we just need one more energy Getting the energy of the Gutsy Big X was very, very lucky, not gonna lie. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are with three energies down on turn one, just as I say how difficult it is. All right. This is a very scary outlook for my opponent. Probably gonna be a quick game. Um, there is no, actually, they cannot get a turn one KO. There is no humanly possible way for them to get a turn one KO. Uh, except with Raichu, I guess. Raichu could actually get a turn one KO. But if I shut down the, the Flaffies afterwards, I'll probably be okay. But there is a universe where Raichu plus a few electromagnetic... Um, what's the word? Electric generator. With a few electric generator, could get a KO. Yeah, so there's that. All right, Beach Board, Tandem Unit, Marip Maridan into Raiku Raichu. No, wow, not even another Maridan, which is very surprising. Also very questionable. Another questionable choice. Um. Like, why wouldn't you get Maridon plus Raikou into Raichu plus Marip? Right? I don't know. Or Raichu or Raichu plus. I don't know. Maybe Bent Space, but. I have no clue. I mean, I guess you want another Marip. Sure. But then this other Raikou, like, what is it really accomplishing? I don't see what it's actually truly accomplishing. Alright, we just need one more energy, which I think I'm just gonna Iono instead of Research. It is one less card, but I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna Iono. I still have um, 11 energy in the deck since I didn't prize any, so I fancy my chances. Of finding literally just one. And the really big card that I do want is Halucha. Okay. You just go into the Skoka Billy. Um they haven't played a generator. They haven't switched either. So I kinda like But I would I do like the free treat. So I'm just gonna if they knock out Skoka Billy, so so be it. It's no big deal. Otherwise, I have free retreat. The sneaky thing my opponent could have done is if they had an electric generator, they could have done that before attaching energy. So, like, now that they've committed the energy, 
if that was an electric generator and they only hit one, then they miss out on two prizes. Uh, so questionable sequencing for sure. All right. But that's all they have for us. There's the energy. Very, very beautiful. Let's go ahead and retreat and then we'll capture the stadium. I'll bench the LXM and you know what? I'm just going to research because my opponent's hand clearly isn't great. And so I'm in a good spot now. I really don't care anymore about shutting down a flat B. So I'm just going to, I mean, shutting down both right now. Not that big a deal. I'm just going to put the 20 there. Sure, you can get your extra fleet footed card. And then through the use of LXM, I can shut down both Fluffies without having the old one. Yeah, because I just, I vantage all the cards in my hand right now. I do want to continue to attach energy per turn. And there's the win. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's jump into the next one. All right, so we get to go first again, which is awesome. And. Um, Oof. Okay, so this time around, our start definitely won't allow us to really, truly power up something big, unless we get like a big mulligan card here, like a Skogabilly or a um, or an Ultra Ball. Not quite. So it's gonna take us a little bit, but that's okay. All right. Which is gonna attach. Interesting that you cannot play the Godsy pickaxe. Um, since I don't have a bench Pokemon that I could possibly attach the energy to. But that's okay. No battle VIP pass start for us, though, is a little unfortunate. Shutting down the refinements is gonna be pretty key. Um, Cresselia will be problematic. The fighting resistance is also problematic, so I don't have a lot of hope against this because Carnivore EX does stop or doesn't get stopped by Tingle EX, right? So it's gonna be pretty difficult to pull this off, not gonna lie. Maybe there is merit to playing Path to Peak with Tingle. That way you get to shut down Carnivore EX. I mean, but if that's the case, then why are you even playing Tinglu, right? Because Path to Peak shuts down your own Tinglu, so definitely questionable. Very, very questionable. All right, Mew fails. And then I have had a pretty underwhelming start so far. We don't play I.O. nor Research, so then if I don't know them, that's going to benefit them, but there's like, there's never a, a universe where I don't I don't know. Okay, they commit the energy to the station. And they're just going to power up. All right, so not super happy about this I don't know, but it is what it is. Hmm. Interesting. Did they attach the energy to the active? All right, let's bench the Alakazam, play the Aeono. I'm looking for a Halucha right now to shut down the potential. Oof. What a, what a draw though. This is really not great. Okay, I kind of like benching the Spirit Tomb. I think I do need the Halucha. Yeah, I think I have to. My Skogability, my Skogability <laughs> doesn't work anymore. So it's no longer my first turn. All right, so Spiritum is shutting down Seishen and Potential Luminion if my opponent is playing that. And that will shut down at least one. Clearly, I could possibly shut down Shining Arcana. I do have the energy to attack next turn, which is nice. And shut down this securely as well. So hopefully this will delay my opponent a little bit. Definitely not looking super great. 
Maybe they forget and I don't read the card properly. They don't remember that I don't shut off Carnivore EX. <laughs> or maybe they do. We'll see. I really need like a research topic or something. But now I'm so behind on energies and I had to lose my other Bravery Charm and my EXP share. So unless I somehow delay my opponent by like six turns, it's just not looking great right now. And there's the Gardevoir EX because why wouldn't they just get Rare Candy Gardevoir, right? Yep, which does work. And that's it. Yeah, this deck will probably never be good. Just based on the fact that um, this deck exists. Yeah, not shutting down Gardevoir EX just means you have zero chance. Literally zero chance. And that's why the path would be hard. But realistically, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My opponent's setup is so good that they don't even bother benching the fourth Ralt in favor of what? I have no clue, but something. But yeah, no chance for me at this stage. Even with a research top deck, I just I can never power up quickly enough. I can never shut down that. It's just not gonna happen. And I gave my opponent such a good card, such a good hand off of the item. I really don't understand the Ralts discard though. That one I do not understand. And if he, please don't bench that. Can I please damage counters. Probably not, probably just thinning. I mean, the question is, do we retreat an attack? And then the answer is always yes, right? Because Tinglu does 150, you do 150, I do 150, and then that's it. Yeah. I'd been able to lay them by like one turn, then maybe I'd have a chance, but it's just not looking great. I have nothing. I wonder if this could be one of the rare instances where Oh, no way. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> that is interesting, to say the least. Gosh, why aren't you the Den AGX? Why are you not the Den AGX? Seriously. <laughs> All right, well. It is what it is. The two damage counters won't help me into shutting this, so let's just shut down the refinement. Now my opponent, I don't know. Like that made no sense whatsoever. I don't have anything that helps me with Ultra Wall though. Like literally nothing helps me with Ultra Wall. I don't understand why my opponent did just retreat and attack me though. They'd be in an even better situation than they currently are. I need to top deck research into attachment and then get lucky with the gutsy pickaxes that's the only chance i have a friendly iono could be nice for my opponent oh wait you know what what if one two three four it would be cool if they self-damaged with all four energies <laughs> that would be nice I have 260, so they shouldn't be able to attack me. Alright, that's two. Please attach all four. Please do me that favor. No way! <laughs> he did it! Wait, is that enough to KO me? No, right? Five to ten. No! <laughs> no way! <laughs> They literally just said, like, that Seijin could have just took it KO'd by Tinglu, and instead, it's just about to die. Wow. Okay. I mean, if I if I had been, like, I don't know. If I had, if I had a bench Tinglu this upcoming turn, I would generally maybe have a small chance of winning this. Maybe. I'm guessing my opponent's only supporter is, like, Iono, and they don't want to play it. But they just handed me the one hit KO. Like, oh wait, is that enough? To f no, it's still not enough. 
240 is not enough. It really just is not. The previous damage that they should have just hit for 150 with three energies. <laughs> All right. No, come on. Gosh, I have literally nothing. I mean, I am about to take two prize cards, I guess, but still. Yeah. All right. Well, there's no need to over KO here. So let's move one damage counter from you to you. <laughs> what is even happening? Why just give me the knockout? Maybe they forgot that Seisham didn't have psychic resistance. I really don't know. But I am somehow not losing this game yet. Penny and fighting energy. Not good enough. Really not good enough. Why? Wow, I play eight supporters. And I play like all of these and then I just couldn't get them in time. I mean, my opponent is doing all the moves possible to possibly allow me to <sighs> Roxanne no oh that is not horrible definitely not horrible I don't know we'll see it's out of my hands really <laughs> it's out of my hands psychic embrace Okay, they will self-damage. Oh, you know what? I can pile enough damage on this Gardevoir to maybe stop them from KOing me next turn. Well, that's seven damage counters. I could move... Oh, I should have put the two damage counters from this Gardevoir put here instead. Is there ever a universe where I can KO between turns? Probably not. Okay. I'm somehow not fully out of this. <laughs> I am actually somehow not fully out of this. All right. They will have abilities back though, fortunately. Why? Why am I drawing this bad? <laughs> One supporter is all I need and I'd be in such a good spot. Okay. Let's just, yeah, let's pile up the damage over here. And then we will use Dino Cry. Only two energy, though. All right. I really need, like, even an energy topic would be fantastic. Energy? No. Research into. I really don't know. There we am. Okay, getting back to station. Yep, that's a good call. It's so dumb that it doesn't reveal the cards that they put back. Like, it shows how bad the the developers don't know the game and the rules and how to play a game of competitive Pokemon or even Pokemon. You know. So disappointing but anyways i'm trying my best here i'm trying my best to win this match despite not drawing supporters despite not attaching energies despite not having anything we somehow still have a chance somehow some way i don't know it's no longer a good card for me to top deck in fact based on like everything i need yeah, we're not winning this. I don't think there's a universe where I ever win this. Like, I'll never have enough back-to-back -back attackers. You know, that's the issue. Memory Skip Ralt is also a big deal. <laughs> like, they just say, like, nope, you cannot land scoop at all. And there's a Chris Hill. Yeah, that's a really good card against this. So, yeah, everything's going out against us. I'm just going to concede here. So, I stopped trying <laughs> my best. But that's okay. Yeah, on to the next one. If you have enjoyed the video so far and found the information useful, 
please consider becoming a Table 1 channel member through the join button down below. For as low as $1.99 a month, you can help support the creation of these videos. All right, so we start off with a mulligan. This grant card feels super awkward and super bad, but like I never had that anyways, the previous game, right? In terms of consistency issues. Now this hand on the other hand though. <laughs> four Ultra, four Battle VIP Pass. Four research and four I don't know. That's 16 cards. One over one out of every four cards are potentially useful cards to get on turn one. Yet I found none of them. It is what it is. I'll top deck Iono or I'll top deck uh research. That's fine. Yeah, I'll take an ultra ball. I'll generally take an ultra ball at this point. All right, tandem unit. They can use that. Is there not a Pokemon V? Why would you not tandem unit before the electromagnetic generator? What's the electric generator? Sorry, I keep calling that wrong. Um, you should always do that before the electric generator because then you're getting cards out of the deck that are not energy, therefore you are increasing the chances of hitting energies off of that. So. Big, big miss by my opponent right there. Really big. Now, this Maiden version is going to be potentially tougher in the sense that uh, they can increase their damage output to one kill my Tinglus. However, Regio Lucky like Max is shut down by Halucha. Um, by Tinglu, rather. So, never mind. Probably shouldn't be too worried about it at all. All right, Battle VIP Pass top deck. That is actually pretty fantastic. And I'm gonna establish these two because I do have a lot of thing loose and I'm gonna get the energies into this card pile. So actually that top deck was probably uh, one of the best I could have found right here, which is really nice. And I'm gonna shut down both of these already. Yeah. We are going to Escape room. Uh, make it a little harder for them, I guess. And just promote the Halucha. And we will Skok. Squack? Is it Skok? Skok? Squack? I have no clue. But so far, so good. We got our friends, which is awesome. And I could potentially stop. Stop, stop, stop. Abilities. But I think I'd rather just research here. Establish another thing, Lou. I have three energies guaranteed already. I am down three switching cards, though, which is less than ideal, but what a difference. Yeah, what an absolute difference from the previous game. Alrighty, I could have taken a chill turn and held on to research and just played escape rope again and promoted the Tinglu. But I mean I'm like their one ability is that exactly, right? So it's really not a big deal. Oh actually and that is stopped by Spirit Tomb, so never mind. Their only ability is actually nothing. Nothing that I should really be worried about. There's a beach court, they go for the retreat, and research, though, you should not be research, you should, okay, they have to, I don't know if they search for a research or the stadium, if they have the research, they should have just researched before retreating, before using their V-Star, I'm guessing they grab the research, but even then, just play the beach court, and then research, yeah, you don't need to retreat until, like, the very last thing that you're about to do, but there's a knockout, and that's gonna be the game. Yeah, so, no surprise, we are going to beat the two Lightning decks, and no surprise, we lose to Gardevoir EX, which we might have had a chance, based on my opponent's genuine uh, mistakes that they were making. However, uh, like, usually on, in an even match, even if I had gotten, like, everything I could have possibly hoped for each and every turn, I still probably would have lost that game anyways. Yeah, so... 
just oh, oh wow <laughs> i'm hitting that way more than i should be all right so now we're gonna shut down the fluffy this time around with this bench damage that is also like such an underwhelming attack in the grand scheme of things you know costly and underwhelming so yep and there it is yeah no abilities um for my opponent's damage modifiers don't know if they had um, any like draw support or whatnot but the weakness is too much and tinglu might be good in a vacuum uh, or where there's not a lot of Gardevoir, but Gardevoir seems to be the best deck in the format, so probably not a good pick right now, but still, Ability Denial always has its place in the metagame. You might sneak uh, some games away from Gardevoir by shutting down their Curlias early on and not allowing them to draw a lot of cards set up and therefore not access a lot of their whole deck with them. So maybe there's a universe, but not in this one. Uh, once again, as usual, small sample size, only three games. Um, the deck ran really well in two, ran really badly in the other, and that's what will happen. Yeah, despite having 16 different really good cards to find Pokemon to draw supporters or, or that are draw supporters on top of the two Skok abilities, right? Um, Skok abilities, sorry, I, I'm butchering the names of everything today. Um, so that's 18, right? Almost one out of every three cards is a card that potentially helps you draw cards. And yet we steal that drew for most of the game against Gardevoir, which is part of the game. It happens. Um, and even without the dead draws, I probably wouldn't have had a fair chance in that matchup anyways. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know um, what other Paldea Evolved decks you'd like to see. If you made it all this way, uh, thank you so much for supporting and for watching the whole video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.